Welcome back. This is right? a snippet of the Q&A, which we never put in our last video. Just make sure to subscribe. Watch till the end. This is super interesting. This video is about if women, like me, <laughs> are considered dirty or unclean during their cycles. Say and woo, watch your head. Please take a moment to subscribe. It, it just means, takes a second. Yeah, it takes a second and oh. it means the world to us. So mental, tell everyone subscribe. Say bye. Oh, oh. Subscribing. Subscribe. Uh, her friend is a rabbi. I help them clean their house before a high holiday event. I notice they have separate twin beds. Is that normal? Because they have nine kids. So what's going on here? What's going on? <laughs> the truth is correct. In Judaism, there is a concept called Taharat Mishpacha, which means family purity. And um, We can make another video going in that in length, like properly. But in extremely short, because the va relationship is extremely valued, there are laws to keep the relationship um, alive. And so Taharat Mishpacha is that a husband and a wife, when a woman is during her cycle, um, during that time frame, and about a week after, she... Her and her husband are not together. We don't sleep together. We don't touch each other. Nothing. Nothing. So there are two separate beds for that reason. And it is not because the woman is now dirty and unclean, as a lot of people um, put it. Can assume. Can assume. Rather because when a woman is during her cycle, what word the science behind it is that she, um, this could have been a child. Life is so sacred in Judaism. So when there's any potential loss of life, then there is this um, purification process that needs to happen. And it's not that the woman is unclean, rather that because there was this loss of life, there's this extra sensitivity. So whenever there is a loss of life, when a, like God forbid, when a person passes away, there's a, um, there is a, there's big purification processes that go around it. When a person, um, Quran, for example, um, is around somebody who passes away, the Quran has to go through a purification process. There are a lot of laws when it comes to a loss of life. So because there is this potential loss of life, there is now this purification process that has to happen. It is not that women is not pure. And men also, when they have... Um, hmm, men also go to mikvah. Um, some awkward? do only once. Some, <laughs> some men only do it once, once a year. And Hasidim do it every single day. Because there's also that concept of if there was any semen released by a man, then it's, it could be obviously a life, and then it could be a loss of life. Um, so that's why men also go to mikvah. So what How awkward as that sounds for me to say. <laughs> so, said, done. And after that, the woman goes to mikvah, and it's like the, um, re... I don't know what the word is. The... Re Tahara. And then they have the next... Well, about two weeks until her next cycle where they can be fully together. So it's basically two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, but... Two, on and off, two weeks, on, two weeks, off, two weeks, on, two weeks, off, two weeks, on, two weeks, off, and... So it keeps... It keeps... A lot of... Um... It keeps the relationship alive because it is obviously not easy when you are in a relationship with someone and you love someone to be apart from them in a physical way. And you want them more. And, and then... you can think about it this way. You would never tell a spouse, okay, you know what, to be a little happier in your marriage, take a break, go on vacation and uh, take a break. We'll never tell them and take a break from each other and then come back, right? You go to Spain, you go to, you go to, you go to Spain, you go to London and then go back to each other. You'll never tell them that. That'll be the dumbest thing to say because then, then they're just going to say, okay, their marriage isn't good. Then they might look for some other uh, relationships, right? Or some other it's just unhealthy. So Judaism has this inbuilt system where we automatically are away from each other and then come back but to each other. But we're still together during... So it's, a, it's definitely a time that you could focus more in an emotional way rather than a physical way with each other. So your relationship but isn't just built on a physical connection and you make sure your relationship you is also two weeks, but emotional. It is definitely not easy and that is why after two weeks it just reignites. It's just like an extra spark. Once a month you just have this like touch all over again and it's really beautiful for a marriage and um, that's why they have two beds so l'chaim l'chaim you want no <laughs> <laughs> i want but not on camera <laughs> thank you for watching let me just show you the place guys it's so pretty so we're in the Gothenburg botanical gardens that's my beard brush that's our bag that's our camera and are you ready 
how cute this cafe is. Look at this.